four-time Indianapolis 500 champion, three-time Brickyard 400 champion. We have the Chevrolet Corvette behind us with the Brickyard 400 logo getting ready for the event July 25th. You guys were able to take a lap around the Indianapolis Motor Speedway with each other. The big question, who drove? Why? Because I wasn't going to let him scare me. I've got, enough, I've, I've got enough gray hair already. I didn't need any more. Talk about riding around together. And, and Jimmy, talk about Rick Mears. I mean, growing up in California, was he an idol for you as you were, you were coming up through racing? Without a doubt. I mean, his family in, in general, um, you know, the, the Rick's success in, in moving on into open wheel and, and doing all that he did um, inspired all of us off-road guys and motorcycle guys, all the dirt guys in Southern California that you know, that's, that's, that could happen. You know, you could go down that road. And um, I was very lucky to end up racing against his brother, Roger. And Roger, you know, was here at the, the 500 in the past. And uh, I don't know how much time he spent in an open wheel car, but, you know, he had a future in that as well if, yeah. if he chose to. But he loved his dirt racing, loved his off-road. And um, I was able to race against him in the stadium racing and in the desert racing. And uh, I've been looking at that Mears Gang sticker for a lot of years and, and very close with Casey, um, you know, Roger's son and, and yeah. Clint's now back in North Carolina, uh, Rick's son and spent some time with him. So um, I'm all about the Mears Gang. They're great people and have done wonders for auto racing. If you're now joining us, welcome to IndianapolisMotorSpeedway.com, our Indy Legends question and answer session. We have a question from at Misfit815. This is for Rick. Rate today's field against your era. And I guess that would be all drivers, whether it be the Eyes on IndyCar series or the Sprint Cup series. Rate the drivers. <sighs> I, I've never really gotten into much of the race. I mean, it's all relative, the way I look at it. I mean, it, you know, different eras, different times, different years, different cars, different equipment, different tracks. But, but still, you know, the same abilities apply. The same talent levels, I think, are, exist. Um, I think we've got a great group of of uh, talent out there today uh, I don't know how to really rate them you know against our era uh, but I think it's all relative you know I think it's um, the cars are a little different you learn things a little differently you know as far as uh, setting up working with engineers differently than we did back then uh, things like that are different but I think the basics are still pretty true and uh, I think you know they're pretty close today of what we were doing then. Same uh, Twitter question here, and this goes to Jimmy. Does IndyCar get discussed in the NASCAR paddock? And if so, what is brought up? Without a doubt, I'd say all forms of racing. Um, I think when you're, when you're in motorsports, you respect all forms of. Um, if it's, there's an F1 race on before a cup race, you'll hear the drivers talking about the F1 race and the start and who won and what happened. Um, during Memorial Day weekend, you know, our race is after the 500 and we're at the, the pits getting our stuff set up and our motor homes and garage area. Every TV set is tuned into the race that's taking place here. I mean, we're, we're all paying attention to stuff. Um, on a Saturday night when the Supercross series is running, I know there's a lot of guys that love watching motocross and we're texting about who's winning and what's going on. So, I mean, if you're a fan of racing, you're a fan of racing and, and everybody talks about it, knows what's going on. Lots of talk with Bruton Smith a couple of weeks back. Let the beans out of the bag a little bit early and was talking about a $20 million bonus for a driver who could win the Indianapolis 500 and go on and win the Coca-Cola 600. Lots of details that have to be ironed out on that. Is open wheel racing anything that you would ever like to try before you decide to, to hang up the driving shoes? Yeah, for me, it is, it's been a dream of mine since I was a kid and, and idolizing Rick and what he had done to come here and race at this track in an Indy car. Um, I, I think that although the $20 million creates a lot of hype and gets a lot of people talking, um, I don't think that is really going to bring the drivers here. Um, because, because the chances of that really taking place and a guy being able to win in both races, they may as well make it worth $100 million. I mean, it's just not going to happen. I mean, there, I guess there's a chance, and I'll be the fool that says this, and everybody reminds me later that it did happen. <laughs> but we were talking earlier, the last few tenths to, that it takes to be competitive, it takes years and years to find that. So in today's world, unless a IndyCar driver worked on a cup program and spent a lot of time developing the skills, or a cup driver worked on his IndyCar program and spent a lot of years, you can't expect a victory. Um, but to be competitive and to come out and experience the 500 or for one of these guys to come and experience our 600, that can happen. 
And that, that would be my mindset. And that's all I really want to do. Of course, I want to win and, and all that stuff, but I want to come here and experience the 500 and see what it's about. Be three wide down this front stretch, looking at a packed house, um, hearing Jim Neighbors sing, you know, sing the Indiana song. I, I want to experience what that's all about. It was interesting. Tony Stewart last night said, you put Jimmy Johnson in a rocket ship and he'll be able to pilot that, that you adapt so quickly. For fun, I mean, you're a pretty successful guy. I would imagine you could find somebody to hand you the keys to an Indy car and hop in. Is that something you'd ever want to try and maybe sneak out here some afternoon? I would love to. I mean, unfortunately, there are a lot of hurdles in the way. Um, I'm a team owner and car sponsor and a lot of people that may not want me inside one of those cars. Uh, then you manufacture issues. Um, I'm not sure my wife is, is too eager to see me in a bullet around here at 2.30, but you know, we'll, if we can get over a few hurdles, maybe we can pick up some momentum. But you know, I've made the statement many years ago. It, it's been a dream of mine to come here and compete, and hopefully, I can get everything aligned and do it someday.